And that will go on in infamy as one of the stories of the Lucasiak family. I wasn't feeling very well. I couldn't figure out why I was so tired. And I take a test and lo and behold, I'm pregnant. So my phone rings and I look at it and it's Chloe's dance teacher. I just filmed this entire video a couple minutes ago and when I went to download all the footage, it wasn't in focus. So here we are again, <laughs> welcome back. Oh, all right, I hope I'm in focus this time. So hello, welcome back to my channel. I hate that so much. So instead of me saying, hi guys, welcome back, we're gonna get started. We're just gonna get started because that feels so weird for me to do. Today, I thought it'd be kind of fun if I told you some stories, like three, 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 three of my stories, my favorite stories from years past, Christmas past. So it's the ghosts of Christmas past, if you will. So gather round, young children, Sit and listen to the YouTube grandma spin tales of yore and yesteryear about the good old days and the way things used to be. That's how I feel on YouTube because there's like creators that are like four months old and I am not. But I do have some good stories, so let's get to it. All right, so my first story is actually the one that happened longest ago and it was December of 1998. Your girl was 21. Oh, and I was living my best life. As you can imagine, 21 was like my peak. Although I like 40, I do, well, I'm older than 40 now, but I like my 40s. I feel like I've like settled into myself in my 40s, but 21, I was like a sorority girl. I was living in the sorority house. I was a cheerleader, I was so skinny. Oh, I had really good skin. All the things, you know, all the things. But anyway, like that's kind of sad if that was my heyday <sighs> or the, that that's kind of sad if that was like my peak, but I think it's everyone's peak, kind of, a little bit. Anyway, so I was 21 and I had been dating Mark at that point for about nine months. I had known him forever, but like seriously dating, we had started dating um, St. Patrick's Day that year. So we were planning to spend the holidays together and I was gonna go to Oil City. Um, Mark had recently got his first job or he was hired at his first job as a newspaper reporter and I think he was making somewhere like <laughs> I have no idea how much money he was making, but it wasn't a lot. I'm going to say like $8,000 a year, but I know that's not true. I'm being very, you know, dramatic for effect. Um, I think Clara calls that hyperbole. Um, anyway, he wasn't making enough money to live on his own. So he was living back at his parents' home um, and saving because we knew that we were going to eventually get married. I think, I don't know. Did we know that at that point? Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, he was living at home. Second bedroom on the right. So. I knew that Mark wanted more than anything, he wanted a puppy. And I was like, oh, that would be so nice if I bought him a puppy. Like, how cute is that? So I called his sister um, about a week before and I was like, hey, I really think I'm going to get Mark a puppy for Christmas. Will you go with me to the Humane Society? Sure, of course. I go to Oil City the week before Christmas. We go. We find the cutest little black puppy. She was a little lab mix. She was so sweet. And I was like, this is her. She's perfect. Like, this will be my gift to Mark for the holidays. And so I said to Kara, I was like, can you take her and keep her at home for a week so that it's a surprise? Sure, great, done. So the 23rd of December comes, Mark comes to Pittsburgh to go to dinner and the Nutcracker because I have been doing that tradition literally forever. And so the next morning we drive up to Oil City. Oh, I'm sorry, that night I get a phone call from Kara. And she's like, oh, you know, um, the puppy's going to the bathroom everywhere. She's not, she's not doing well. She, she seems kind of sick. I think we need to take her to the vet. I was like, okay, I'll be there the next morning. So Christmas Eve comes, I drive up, we take the puppy to the vet. The vet takes one look at black puppy and she's like, you know, I'm gonna keep her overnight. She doesn't seem okay. And I'm like, oh, I hope she's all right. You know, drop her off. You know, again, she's still a secret at this point. Mark has no idea. So that night we have dinner, it's Christmas Eve. We go to church, we, you know, drive home. It's snowing, the lights are beautiful. And around midnight, Mark and I are watching It's a Wonderful Life next to the fire. His parents have gone to bed, you know, and it's like the most Capra-esque moment ever. And Mark hands me a piece of paper 
and I can't say too much about it because he's so weirdly private, but he had written something for me because he was a writer and then I'm reading it and I look up and he's on his knee and he proposes and so I get engaged on Christmas Eve. So Christmas Eve will always have a very special place in my heart. So cut to Christmas morning. You know, we wake up, everyone is so excited, we're engaged, like Christy's gonna be part of the family. <laughs> Actually, that was probably terrifying. But anyway, we were like all thrilled. It was a good moment. And I give Mark this big, beautifully wrapped package. Like I wrap the lid so when he takes it off, it's like a soap opera gift, you know, with bows and it's full of dog toys. And I wrote this letter. And I was like, hi, I'm your puppy. I can't wait to meet you and play with you and go for all these walks and I'm gonna be your best buddy. Ha da 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 da. So the phone rings. And it's the vet and Black Puppy had died because of course she did. It turns out that she had parvo and she was not long for this world no matter what. They did everything they could for her but she was just too sick to save. And she had a good, you know, week of life with Kara so I feel good about that but it is kind of really on brand for me that Mark gave me a diamond ring for Christmas and I gave him a dead puppy. And that will go on in infamy as one of the stories of the Lucasiak family. So about three weeks later, as an engagement gift, my in-laws actually bought us a golden retriever puppy because everyone was so heartbroken about this dog. And that was Cami, and that ended up being Chloe's first pet. She was our first family pet. We loved her. She was so wonderful. Um, so it's kind of, you know, it's bittersweet, but it is kind of funny that like I gave Margaret a dog. I mean, but anyway, so that is Christmas 1998. Now for my second Christmas story, I'm going to tell you the tale of the greatest Christmas gift of all time. So it is now December 2008 and Chloe's about seven. And at this point, like Mark and I had always wanted to have another baby, but I had some issues after Chloe was born. So we just kind of assumed that she was gonna be an only child and I was gonna focus all of my attention only on her and be a really, really involved mother, which I may still have been, but she is so lucky <laughs> that Clara came along to kind of take some of my attention away. You're welcome, Chloe. So anyway, it was December 22nd. I wasn't feeling very well. I couldn't figure out why I was so tired. And I take a test and lo and behold, I'm pregnant. And everyone has these big, beautiful, like grand reveal stories and all of these things. Not me, I walked out of the restroom and I looked at Mark and I was like, oh my God. We're having a baby and chloe's like what and i was like you're gonna be a big sister and it was just like it was the most like unexciting way to tell anyone ever um but i mean after i got it over the initial shock chloe was like oh my god she's like i'm gonna have a little friend and all of these things and so come december 24th we're at his parents house and of course we tell everyone and everyone is thrilled because like we were just so excited to have clara and with both of my girls mark did not want to find out what we were having i found out that i was having chloe uh, i found out i was having a girl and he did not want to know and he didn't care who knew he just didn't want anybody to tell him so we kept it a secret forever and then like a week before i was having her his mother -in -law, or his mother my mother-in-law totally blew it and told him that it was a girl but i have since forgiven her kathy you are forgiven um i don't hold grudges that long but anyway so with Clara Chloe wanted to be the one to find out if it was a boy or girl because she wanted a sister so desperately so we take her to the sonogram appointment and she made like this little tiny piece of paper that said check one boy or girl so we go through the appointment you know the the technician checks the box she folds up the piece of paper gives it to Chloe we go out into the hallway Chloe opens the paper and proceeds to throw herself on the floor screaming and crying in joy running up and down the hallway and Mark and I looked at each other and we're like so I guess it's a girl and she's like no it's a boy and we're like Chloe we know your reaction it's a girl and she's like I'm having a girl we're having a girl so Clara you were the greatest Christmas gift that we ever had so yay Clara for my third 
Christmas story. This didn't happen exactly, uh, you know, like the December 22nd, 23rd, 24th time period. This happened a little bit earlier in the month. And Chloe was actually having a sleepover at my house with Paige. Paige had come over and they used to like to take like all of these different dance clothes and mismatch all these outfits and put on these wild and crazy shows. So like they were wearing 14,000 layers of clothes and they come down and they were performing Santa Baby for Clara and I, I think Clara's like one. And you know, we're sitting on the couch, we're watching them and they thought they were hysterical. I have footage of this somewhere. I really need to find it. So my phone rings and I look at it and it's Chloe's dance teacher. Now mind you, at this point, like we were still like, we had no problem with the relationship. We talked, you know, it was no big deal. So I answer and she's like, hey, uh, remember that footage that we shot in September and October? And I was like, yeah. Like I had walked around the studio and I was shooting all this different footage of different moms. And like I had taken her into the studio and I was like, hey, I need to shoot you teaching Chloe and just all of these different things. And she was like, yeah, there's a network that's interested. They're coming in early January to shoot a sizzle. And I'm like, oh. I remember thinking like, okay, like this is gonna be a thing. Like I knew it was gonna be a thing. I, I don't know how I knew it, I just knew it. Um, before we shot one second of the sizzle, I was like, it's gonna be a thing. I don't know, someday I will tell you that whole story. That's a different story time for another time. But anyway, I hung up the phone and I looked at Chloe and Paige and I was like, yeah, so I think you guys are gonna be on TV and they're like, what, we're gonna be on TV? Cool, like Santa baby. And they like went right back to what they were doing. Never really paid much attention to me and I sat there on the couch and I thought, 2011's gonna be interesting. And it was. So those are my three tales of Christmas past. Hope you liked it and I'll see you next video.